Hello everyone, I am Neto Rosatelli from Brazil and I'll open this meeting talking about planning strategies in cases of dislocated IOLs and secondary IOL implantation. From an IOL nightmare to vision restored demands judicious and meticulous work as we will see. Dealing with dislocated IOLs or facing a secondary IOL implantation is not an ordinary task. These two situations present many challenges. Necessary information about pre-existing conditions may be lacking, corneal or capsular opacity issues and iris adherences may hamper adequate examination. Anterior segment structure status are often less than ideal for correction, requiring technically difficult procedures, which are not routinely done, especially by inexperienced surgeons. If I were to resume this whole presentation with one phrase, I would say, be prepared. To be prepared, it is imperative to initiate a thinking process to be able to plan the best strategy to address the problem. Situational awareness should be made in order to be able to choose the best course of action. The surgeon can then prepare him or herself with material and technical knowledge to approach the case. During surgery, it is often necessary to reassess the situation and eventually change plans as new information is achieved. Undoubtedly, the most important thing to assess is presence and quality of capsular support. Having capsular support for the IOL greatly facilitates things allowing simpler, less invasive and more predictable techniques to be used. Ability to use the capsular bag for IOL support depends on many factors. How are the zonules? Is there a posterior capsule rent or young laser capsulotomy? Anterior and posterior capsule fusion and presence of cortex remnants and summering's ring presents a challenge to in the bag IOL implantation. Anterior capsular axis status is most important to be determined as it can play a major role not only by providing support but also by allowing optic capture with all its advantages. A phimotic capsular bag is a major challenge, often requiring complete bag removal and employment of IOL fixation techniques. Iris condition assessment will dictate not only necessary surgical steps to be taken, such as releasing synechiae and incision iris strapping and even pupiloplasty, but also prevent use of IOL iris fixation techniques, for example. Anterior chamber vitreous presence is a frequent occurrence requiring adequate management and decision-making process, often done as things progress. Some situations may require retina specialist assistance if the surgeon is not qualified, such as rescuing an IOL or an IOL back complex from the vitreous, for example. With dislocated IOLs, the question to be asked is, why did it dislocate? This information is key in order to decide what to do, as it often determines or limits the options to correct the problem. The ideal solution is to be able to use the same IOL, better yet in an in-the-bag situation or with, at least with capsular support. 
Be wary of repositioning an IOL and leaving it without knowing why it dislocated in the first place. To be able to maintain the existing IOL, the following question arises. Is this IOL still good to be used? Are the haptics in order? Was the previous refractive outcome adequate? If in the bag implantation is not feasible, is it compatible with the intended fixation technique? If the existing IOL will not be maintained, the surgeon must be comfortable with the explantation techniques to be used and have the required surgical instruments available. Using optic capture is desirable for many reasons as it provides IOL centration and long-term stability and also acts as a barrier, stabilizing a two-chambered eye. That is why achieving a perfectly centered and adequately sized capsular axis when doing cataract surgery is important as it represents a kind of insurance should IOL dislocation or IOL exchange indication occur in the future. Aspheric and multifocal IOLs absolutely need adequate positioning for good performance. Alternatives should be prepared in case these situations cannot be achieved. Also, remember that the lens effective position affects IOL power calculations. If the previous surgery is recent, some aspects must be considered, such as incision placement, use of the same incisions, feasibility to release an IOL from its attachments, etc. As some of these questions will be answered only during surgery, initial planning is subjected to change. Some aspects relative to patient's characteristics may play a role in deciding which technique to use. Surgeons are more comfortable using IOL iris fixation techniques in older patients than in young ones, for example. Anticoagulant use may prevent scleral fixation techniques, which are more prone to bleeding. Other ocular or systemic conditions may also interfere. Material and instruments availability play an important role in technique choice. Be sure to have everything necessary to perform the chosen procedure. Micro instrumentation and special hooks are a great asset in managing these cases. A multitude of fixation techniques exists. These techniques present different levels of difficulty. Some require special material or IOLs. Their indication and applicability vary depending on many aspects of the case and even surgeon preference or experience. Cost issues may be important. It is advisable that the surgeon achieves experience on more than one to be able to deal with IOL nightmares. The surgeon should always consider an alternate plan and have a spare IOL if necessary should the main plan happens not to be feasible. We do have a Swiss Army knife in our armamentarium, the foldable three-piece IOL. It is the best choice in doubtful or unforeseen situations because it is compatible with most IOL fixation techniques. The surgeon should always have a foldable three-piece IOL inventory available at all times. 
please visit my YouTube channels. Lots of videos on many surgical techniques. Search my name on YouTube and you'll find them. Thank you for your attention.